The path to true success is achieved through determination. With the goal! Determination to grow, to push through, and to finish. Utah Valley student athletes strive for these qualities. Out of here! UVU student athletes need your support from the community, their peers, and their families to achieve this growth and success in life. Support from donors like you makes a significant impact on the lives of more than 370 Wolverine student athletes. The General Athletic Scholarship Fund will help our student athletes be successful in the classroom, on the field, and in life. Please support our student athletes with a personal donation and watch these men and women grow now and in the future. Furthermore, what do I want? What makes you itch? That's the most important investigation anyone can make. But you don't find this out until you investigate it. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? How would you really enjoy spending your life? Because if you say that money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. Forget the money. After all, if you do really like what you're doing, you can eventually become a master of it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. Therefore, it's so important to consider this question. What do I desire? Smooth sailing. More traffic. Great looking ahead. More weather. New details are emerging. More breaking news. Whenever, wherever. That's good news. More ways to know before you go. You're going to like the morning commute. On KSL Today. Weekday mornings on KSL 5. Experienced? Check. Accurate? Check. The team more Utahns trust to stay safe from winter weather surprises? Check, 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 and check. Know before you go. Check with the KSL 5 weather specialists. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access ready to go yeah. South and highlights for every single championship stay in the game all season long with ncaa.com and the ncaa sports app UCCU is both a credit union and a full-service mortgage company. Which means that UCCU always provides the lowest rates and lower insurance premiums than other lenders. When your mortgage rate and insurance premium are lower, your monthly payment is also lower. It's just science. That's more money you can put into your home. Or back into your pocket. So if you're thinking about buying or refinancing a home, talk to us. The credit union that's been putting people over profits for over 60 years. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the WAG Digital Network, KSL streaming apps, and other platforms. Brandon Crow alongside Holden Hunsaker. Thank you for letting us be a part of your Saturday afternoon here in Orem, Utah at the UCCU Center. Holton always looking fly next to me, making me look bad. <laughs> but Holton, it's a big game today. 
I mean, it feels like game. it's almost like a tournament like atmosphere here. I mean, anytime Grand Canyon and Dan Marley's crew come into town, it's always a different vibe. Yeah, they always have a lot of talent on their team, and they're guys that play extremely hard. And especially when you're this close to tournament time, everybody's trying to build some type of momentum going into the tournament. And that's really why we get a playoff or a whack tournament type atmosphere. Last time out against these two squads in Phoenix, Utah Valley and Coach Madsen did something that Mark Pope never did, and they beat Grant Canyon in Phoenix. <laughs> that was a great win, and, you know, that win, ironically, the New Mexico State lost in the way that they, they won that game, and that's how you got to take it. That momentum, I believe, gave them a lot of confidence to go on and beat Cal State Bakersfield the other night by 15 points and really controlled that entire ball game. Utah Valley in their green uniforms, honoring former athletic director Michael V. Jacobson will be inducted to the Utah Valley Athletics Hall of Fame after serving 29 years as athletic director. His favorite color is green, so Utah Valley, the men's team, honoring him today. There will be a ceremony at halftime, but they're honoring him with those green jerseys. And the Lopes, who get an early foul call against Utah Valley against Brandon Averett are wearing their away whites with the gray numbers, purple trim on the outside. Again, we mentioned last time out, Utah Valley came away with the victory as there's a jump shot missed by Grand Canyon early. Blackshear, T.J. Washington with a lob to Iman Alojapoki, and that's how Utah Valley gets started. He has an amazing knack or just a gift to be able to feel where defenders are and to throw those lob passes. TJ's done that since the day he walked on to Utah Valley's campus. Dixon misses his jump shot. Now here comes Utah Valley. Cross-court pass, Kazin Jardine. That one rims away. Wolverines beat the Lopes in Phoenix 73-69 January 25th. And Utah Valley closed out that game with a 14-2 run. Nice up and under layup. Carlos Johnson all tied up at two. And that game almost seems like an entire season away as you know, really things does. have kind of turned for both teams where Grand Canyon has won seven of their last ten and the Wolverines have lost four of their last five. And we mentioned before just – any momentum going into tournament play and trying to gain some type of rhythm and, you know, optimism going into the tournament is huge as Brandon continues what he did on Thursday night. Brandon Averett starting things off for his point scoring with a bang three-pointer. He had 20 points on Thursday. And out of those 20 points, five of those coming from distance, five of six. Brandon Averett trying to continue that hot streak today. Now the other side, Wolverines playing defense. T.J. Washington got a hand on it. He had six steals in Thursday's contest. They're going to call an early foul on Eman Olojapoki. And you can see Coach Madsen and even the guys on the court grimace each time those fouls are called. Again, this Wolverine group running a little thin and obviously rely a lot on this starting five. Johnson with the spin move, puts the dribble on the floor. Another spin move, and he gets that one to fall over. A leaping Eman Olojapoki. He had to. Eman on Thursday had three blocks, set the single season record for blocks. He broke a Colton Manyang streak. Now he has 72 on his career. Cassin Jardine stuck in the paint. Turnaround jump hook. That's good. 7 to 4, Wolverine lead. I feel like Kaz has been a lot more aggressive these yeah. past few games, and it's really helped because, again, they need production across that entire backcourt, and Kaz just brings that shooting, and then he has a great feel, too, around the rim. Alessandro Laver with that layup right there is now second all-time in Grand Canyon's Division I scoring, passing Dwayne Russell. Now... 12,051 career points for Alessandro Labor. Congratulations to him. And Labor there with the rebound after that Cass and Jardine miss. And Blackshear misses with the floater. Washington trying to save it. Goes out of bounds. 
runs into Mark Madsen. I believe that's his father-in-law spilling some popcorn <laughs> on the baseline. <laughs> Coach Madsen a little bit nervy. His wife is pregnant and, and really do any minute now. With their number two. It's pretty cool to see the family affair that travels with Coach Madsen. His mom and dad are always there to support him. You mentioned the father-in-law there. They, they really appreciate what his son's doing and what he's trying to continue to progress and build here at UVU. Brandon Averett now in transition for the Wolverines. Driving baseline, kicks it back out. Jardine now to Isaiah White, corner three-pointer. That one comes up short. Rebounded by Dixon in Grand Canyon. Wolverine with a one-point lead, 7-6. Six. 16 left to play in the first. Laver trying to go against Brandon Morley. That one comes up way long. Brandon Averett for the Wolverines. I know I'm going to say this more because I've already said it, but I love these green uniforms <laughs> from Utah Valley. And T.J. Washington loves that layup. Saw the crease, put it right back up and in. 9-6, to six, Utah Valley on top. I think this matchup right here is going to be the one for the night between Isaiah White and Carlos Johnson. They are both extremely athletic and tough guys, and Carlos has came ready to play today. C.J. with another triple. Quickly. Seven points for Carlos Johnson. Carlos Johnson had 21 points in that outing last time against Utah Valley. They're going to say that this foul was on the floor, no shot. But that will take us to our first media timeout. All tied up at nine apiece. If this is any indication of how the rest of this game is going to go, buckle up because we've got a fun one ahead of us. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back on the WAC Digital right after this. I've been inspired by strong female athletes, female coaches, women in power. They just really taught me how to be a leader and inspired me to take on leadership roles. It's important to inspire the next generation because it's important to give kids someone to look up to. You know, it's important to have these mentors. I would say to someone who wants to play sports at the D1 level, you've got to be good in the community, good in the classroom, and to show people that sports do not define you. Welcome back to the UCCU Center on the campus of Utah Valley University. Again, Brandon Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker. Holton right now tied up nine apiece. Mark Manton is 1-0 and all-time versus Grand Canyon. Dan Marley 10-5. and <laughs> I like 1-0 and better. That's a perfect record, right? No, it's going to be it's going to be a battle. You can tell from the start that it's going to be an Isaiah White and, as you mentioned, C.J. battle there for Grand Canyon. And they rely a lot on both of those guys for – not only their physical presence, but what they can do on the offensive end. And they're both going to have their hands full going back and forth with each other and trying to contain the other. Carlos Johnson, perfect so far from the floor. Three of three, seven points. And like you mentioned, not only can he do it offensively, but it's his defensive presence as well that helps this Lopes team. T.J. Washington quickly, Cassie Jardine on its way, and that one comes up short again. But I still like Kazan's shot selection. I, I think, again, it's pivotal for him to be a shooter and continue to move the scoreboard full of Wolverines, and he really has such a beautiful stroke. Can't afford to back down and be timid. That's right. Laver in the paint, already with two, makes it four with the turnaround jump hook. Continuing to add to that point total, already cementing his place second all-time in the Grand Canyon Division I scoring list. 11-9, Lopes out on top. Cassin Jardine, again, the option that Utah Valley seemed to be going with as Brandon Aver goes up, gets fouled, doesn't make the layup, but he'll go to the free throw line. He's really turned it on as well these past few games. It, you know, innately, I think just his personality is pass first. He loves getting his teammates involved, but as this season's progressed, he's seen, you know, what is needed on this team is for him to be aggressive and try to look to score. Again, that's that line for Averitt on Thursday as he makes the first free throw. 20 points, three rebounds 
He was only one of two from the charity stripe, but he had five of six from three-point land and a total of seven of ten field goals made. And he makes both free throws. Wolverines coming out in a 2-2-1 press, and on that last possession, they went back to a 2-3 zone. It looks like they're going to stay in it. Something we haven't seen the Wolverines play a lot of zone defenses is TJ trying to chase after another steal there. Speaking of TJ and defense, again on Thursday in that big victory over Bakersfield, TJ Washington had five steals. J.J. Overton checking into the mix along with Trey Woodbury for the Wolverines. You and I were talking earlier just about how what J.J. brings off the bench. They, they don't, again, they don't have a whole lot of firepower coming off the bench, and he had 13 in that game against Bakersfield, and that you know, really is a difference maker for them when they can go to the bench and, and not go negative with the scoring. Overton back out to Washington. Washington, Brandon Averett, stutter step, sees a crease, kicks it back out to Overton, and they're going to say J.J. traveled. A little happy feet, maybe a little anticipation. He, he just wasn't ready to shoot the basketball. I thought Brandon delivered him a pass where he should have been ready to shoot there on the wing, and J.J. just kind of unsurprisingly got that pass from Brandon. 11 all, 13.30 left to play in the first half. Quick pass in lay to Laver. Laver with the spin move, turn around, fade away. Very Dirk Nowitzki esque. That was pretty. All three of his baskets have just looked easy. I mean, he very smooth. You mentioned Dirk. I almost mentioned, you know, the Joker right now from sure. Denver and kind of way they they play and operate on the court. Overton misses the six foot jumper. Blackshear. Being pestered by T.J. Washington. And Utah Valley want to travel on that end. Carlos Johnson going up, showing off those muscles, deflecting off of Brandon Morley, then eventually off the glass. Nine points now for C.J. Washington and in low to Brandon Morley with the layup. Brandon Morley is one of those guys where if you can get that confidence building early, he'll pay off in dividends down the stretch for you. Exactly, because, I mean, the old adage is you can't teach seven feet, right? <laughs> like, true. <laughs> and he just brings so much to the game with his length and his size out there. You guys, you see him pushing Lever out, and J.J. Nice. forced the turnover. Nice hands from J.J. Overton to forcing that turnover. Quick passing, corner to three-pointer. Trey Woodbury, yes, sir. Trey Woodbury, 16-15. Utah Valley on top. I, I respect how Brandon's approached this game, too. Me, whenever I came off a 20-point game, I was looking to shoot the ball every time I saw it again, and he's been extremely unselfish and made the right passes early on. Blackshear driving against the trees. Gets stuck. Swatted away. Ball trickles out of play. It's going to say last touched off of J.J. Overton. So again, those pesky hands, those active hands for Utah Valley's defense. Give them some fits here for Grand Canyon, but the Lopes only trail by one. 16-15, under media, timeout. We'll be right back after this. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field, on the track, on the court, in the pool, and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents, the officials, the fans, and our team. Great sportsmanship is about keeping everything in perspective. It's about taking ownership after a loss. And being humble after a win. We hope you'll team up with us by staying positive on the sidelines. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. Ready to go? Tough And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app.
Utah Valley's Green Man Group getting their inspiration from a trio of drummers down south in Las Vegas. The Blue Man Group spawning the Green Man Group here in Utah Valley. The ultimate hype group for these Wolverines. Utah Valley now on top of the lope, 16 to 15, 11.35 left to play in the first half. Brandon Crow alongside Holden Hunsaker, thank you for letting us be a part of your Saturday afternoon on the WAC Digital Network, KSL streaming app, and other platforms as well. Right now, go, go ahead. ahead. No, just as we take a glance here at the stats, the thing I'm most impressed with is, I mean, not only the distribution of the basketball, the Wolverines have six assists on six field goals. Yep. So every bucket has came off of assists. Again, we've seen the extra passes being made. But they've taken care of the basketball extremely well, too. Only one turnover to start this game. On Thursday night, an early inlet pass. That one no good. Thursday night, Utah Valley out of 24 made field goals, 16 assists on the 24. Oh. Wolverines holding on to that one-point lead. Washington to Averett. Morley with the screen. Averett rolls, kicks it back in low to the big fella. Big fella gets blocked from behind. And a good no call from the officials there. Yeah, but that's something we haven't seen Brandon do either. You know, Brandon usually wants to look. He's, he's not a black hole, so to speak, which is a big compliment because most of the time that ball goes down low, you never see it come out again. But that time he was strong with it, tried to rip through and create something down around the basket. Johnson. Loses the ball in the paint. Here comes Utah Valley. T.J. Washington gives way to J.J. Overton in transition. And J.J. Overton face plants, heads first into the photographer section, but not after getting fouled and going to the free throw line. Nice job there on that possession by Brandon to get his hand and swipe that ball away to create the steal and the transition free throws here for J.J. Overton makes the first free throw. Overton on Thursday night finished off with 12 points coming off of the bench. Six of ten from the floor. Four assists, two rebounds, and had an emphatic dunk right at halftime as time expired to uh, light a little fire under his own team and this hometown crowd as well. And that second rebound misses off the back iron. Nice hustle there by Woodbury. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line. That's good. That's just a silky smooth touch right there from J.J. Terrific job by Trey to almost tip that one out back to himself. And then J.J., after just missing a free throw from that exact same spot, comes back confidently and rises up for that jumper. Blackshear with the hesitation, drives. Another floater, too strong. Right into the hands of Aloja Pokey. Isaiah White loses it. Here comes Blackshear. Blackshear drives, gets the layup to go. That's a, a rare make there going against E-Man, who usually sends that back the other way. Blackshear, one of those players that Coach Dan Marley has said, unbelievably good. And we'll get into more of that in just a minute as he gets his hands on it for a breakaway steal, give and go. And they're going to call a block, blocking foul against Trey Woodbury. Jimmy Cassis and his crew calling a block on Trey Woodbury. And again, we haven't had a chance to see a replay, but it looked like the right call. It looked like Trey was inside that circle. And anytime you get inside that half circle there around the rim, it's an automatic. Unless you jump and go vertical, it's an automatic block there, an easy call for the fisher. After that missed free throw by Jenkins, going back to Blackshear. They say, you know, he's, he's a freshman, but he's not playing like one. Or a 5'11 guy, for that matter. Like you said, Dan Marley's calling him, quote, unbelievably good. One of only seven players in the nation, averaging 10.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, 3.5 assists, and 1.5 and steals. And that way, I mean, in the last game against Seattle, he had 21 points off of 7 of 10 shooting. So he's an extremely efficient player as Isaiah White skies in there and Nearly gets the and one on the putback. 
fan, a little, the fans here a little bit more energetic than normal after that last missed free throw because they got free ice cream from a local ice cream joint here. Culver's one of our sponsors. So after the two missed free throws from Grand Canyon, Isaiah White makes it his free throw, puts Utah Valley on top 20 to 17. Those offensive rebounds and just the hustle plays that Isaiah White brings game in and game out is what they missed when he was out with that knee injury for a few games. And he brings a toughness and just you know, kind of a almost calmness with his confidence in the way he plays with his team. Isaiah White on Thursday, seven rebounds and 11 points as well. Blackshear driving, gets swats away by Iman Alodraboki. 73 on his career. And counting, Brandon Averitt drives, gets fouled on the other end. Defense to offense for this Wolverine team. Utah Valley has an opportunity to extend their lead to the largest of the game so far. This whole week has been one big block party for Eman Alojapoki. And we've all been invited. Brandon Averitt. Now with six early points in the first half. This happened on Thursday night, Holton, where uh, about the same time in the first half, check, taking a look at the stats here, as uh, Averitt makes his second free throw. Every Wolverine player to step on the court has scored, and that's, that's vital for this Wolverine team. Well, it's vital, and it just kind of tells you a little bit about the character of this team and what must be going on in that locker room. They got to like each other, right? <laughs> like you share the basketball like this. They enjoy being around each other. They trust each other in the sense that that ball is going to come back as Trey gets his hand on another steal. And that there's a lob on the other end. Trying to bring down the house was J.J. Overton and Trey Woodbury is going to get caught for a hustling slash unnecessary foul. Saved a layup. Uh, they would have had Grand Canyon would have had a layup there if Trey wouldn't have got the foul, but maybe we would give up the layup to have Trey the rest of this half as he just picked up his second foul. So Woodbury goes to the bench. Coming back into the game is Kaz and Jardine. Johnson going against Isaiah White. Johnson drives to the left, creates contact, falling away. That one comes up short. Isaiah White gets the ball after that one was plucked into the air by Grand Canyon. A little over eight minutes left. Averitt behind the back, cross-court pass. Cassidy Jardine drives. And they're going to call a blocking foul against Carlos Johnson. So it'll stay Utah Valley possession. I think Kazan got was very fortunate on that one. He should have took the shot. And again, we've mentioned before he's been so much more aggressive. And not that the drive wasn't aggressive, but he's just such a great shooter. And shooters need to shoot their shots, and that's what their team uh, really relies on him for. So Utah Valley thought that they were already in, in the shooting range here, but that was Grand Canyon's sixth team foul, so they're going to take this one underneath their own hoop with 20 on the shot clock. Averitt gives way to Isaiah White. White drives against Carlos Johnson. White, with the strong effort, gets it to go off the glass. Again, that's the battle we talked about, and you can – See a little trash talk there, Isaiah White, as he came back down the court on that one. Blackshear gets fouled from behind for Brandon Averitt, trying to give the old man reach to the move my dad uses playing the basketball <laughs> against me. Now take us to our under eight media timeout. Wolverines with their largest lead of the game, 25-17. 7.50 left to play. We'll step aside and be right back at Orm, Utah after this. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool, too. Yep. 
When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now. With the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. Welcome back, everybody, to Utah Valley University on the campus here at UCCU Center. Brandon Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker. And Holton, it's a special day. There's a special guest here. A very uh, Former guest. athletic director who you know very well is going to be honored at halftime. Yeah, Mike Jacobson. Mike Jacobson hired my dad when he became the head coach here when it was just Utah Valley Community College at that time. Excuse me, UVSC. And... Uh, yeah, Mike's done so much for our family. I mean, obviously what it did, it did for my dad's career, the relationship we were able to build with him. I mean, before I went on my, you know, church mission, church service mission, I sat down with Mike. He gave me a lot of great advice. I'll never forget, you know, the things that he taught and told me and obviously what he did over his 29 years and took, you know, a junior college to Division One and saw the success that not only basketball, but all of the programs experienced through his direction uh, has just been amazing, has been unprecedented, and, you know, rightfully should be, you know, included in this Hall of Fame. Jacobson, again, athletic director for 29 years. When he started out, there was only four sports. Now Utah Valley is 16. All at the Division I level after being that Junior College Community College. After Labor missing that layup, Utah Valley now with the basketball. 7.30 left to play. 25-17 is the lead. Kazan Jardine, wide open look on its way. Comes off left. Iman Lojapoki tried to get his hand on it into his teammates. Now Carlos Johnson out the way for Grand Canyon. Kicked him back out. Step back three-pointer. That one short from Dixon. Rebounded by Washington. Here comes Utah Valley. Isaiah White with the drive and the finish. Oh, baby, Isaiah White, two hands. That's what this crowd came here to see. <laughs> they want more of that. Again, Isaiah is just a hustle guy. He runs the court so well. It's every possession, not only for breakaway dunks, but he works so hard out there every time and going to get a cheap foul kill here. Is CJ got him off the dribble and trying to recover. He kind of got him in the back of the head with a swipe down. Utah Valley on an 8-0 run over the last two and a half minutes. 16-2 run over the last five minutes. And Johnson misses that free throw. Grant Cannon on an offensive scoring drought. Hasn't scored in the last three and a half minutes. Johnson uncharacteristically missing that free throw. Nine total points now on the contest. And Johnson silences the frenzied crowd with the free throw. Does the crowd think they get a double scoop if we get two <laughs> people that miss, I guess? Uh, think that they're moving on to burgers now. I don't know. <laughs> 27-18, Utah Valley on top of Grand Canyon. 6.30 left to play in the first half. T.J. Washington drives, kicks back out. Isaiah White. Now drives again, loses from behind. Nice hands from Grand Canyon. Dixon. Labor falls, no whistle. Dixon top of the key. Brown driving now. Labor, spin move, going up against Lojapoki. And that right there is one of those moments that E-Man has done all season long where he alters the shots, and Coach Madsen says those don't show up in the box score, but that right there should count as technically a block in and of itself. Yeah, exactly. He's just, again, so long, and he's just active on every defensive possession, just waiting and anticipating that next block or to make a play or alter a shot, as you mentioned. Isaiah Brown called for the foul on the other end. As Brandon Morton is going to come in for Utah Valley for Eman Alojapoki. And Brown will step off for the Lopes. 
this last four to five minutes, Grand Canyon's really struggled to score, find any type of, you know, I don't love the term rhythm because I don't know what exactly it means, but it, UVU has changed the defenses every possession almost, going from that 2-3 zone. They showed a 2-2-1 press earlier. Grand Canyon just hasn't been able to get any type of flow offensively just based upon how the Wolverines keep changing things up for them. Kaz and Jardine making both of those free throws. Pull up jumper inside the arc, no good. And again, adding to that drought. JJ Overton now receiving. Isaiah White, hard drive, trying to go strong. Misses the layup. And here comes Grand Canyon on the other end, led by Dixon. Gets way to Johnson. Johnson now in double digits. 12 points now for Carlos Johnson. He really does lead this team. I mean, we mentioned Lever earlier, but the way that CJ goes, the team goes, and they look for him to do so much as Lever doing a great job staying vertical, and Isaiah just got bumped a little bit on that shot. Dixon, Carlos Johnson calling for it, gets it. Isaiah White flying in from out of nowhere and gets the foul called against him. So two quick fouls for Isaiah White in the last three minutes. Take a look at the box scores here, Holton. There's only three Lopes who scored. <laughs> Carlos Johnson's got 12, Laver has six, and Blackshear's got two. And it's been that way the majority of this conference season. Again, CJ averages 16 along with Lever. Outside of those guys, you got 13 and 11, and then you go to that bench, there's just not a whole lot of scoring. And as the season wears on you and it gets long, you have to deal with injuries and not having any production off the benches. It is really tough to have a successful season with them. They've, they've done fairly well. Once conference plays turned around again, they're third in conference right now, but you know, the season gets longer and longer and as everyone's trying to gear up for that tournament, it's important to find scoring across, across the board. Overton to Woodbury to Jardine, back to Overton on the outside for the Wolverines. Washington thought about it, brings it back down. Now, do it again. That one comes off the rim. Rebounded by Grand Canyon. Blackshear, nice stutter step in the paint. Trapped. Yeah, he'll pull up a jumper himself. That one comes off right. And they're going to call an offensive foul over the back. And they're going to call that one on Lorenzo Jenkins. That'll be the eighth Lopes team foul, so Utah Valley will try to benefit from those whistles from here on out. See, it's TJ going to the line there. He, For his size, he actually really is a good rebounding point guard. He's not afraid to block out and be physical around the rim. And, Obviously, he's shown not only <laughs> rebounding, but he's got great legs and spring up around the rim. Washington's free throw now Washington. makes this a 10-point game for Utah Valley. 31-21 with four minutes left here in the first. You know, one of the comments Coach Marley made after that loss to Seattle was that they just didn't come out ready to play. They actually gave up 54 points in that first half against Seattle, but only giving up 21 here are the Wolverines. They've definitely come out and kept Grand Canyon down after their down coming from off that loss up in Seattle. Washington slicing his way all the way through <laughs> the court. Had a very optimistic thought to try and lob that one up for. If that was E-Man, it was going down. <laughs> <laughs> Utah Valley turns the ball over, but we'll take a break. Under four media timeout, 31-21. Wolverines on top by a dime after this.
Oh, hey, you got one of those insurance apps too? You know how this thing works? No, I'm sorry. Not an app, it's my agent. In this moment. No, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Auto owner's insurance. The no problem people. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owner's insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. Willie the Wolverine on Springs today. Spring, that's a word that we haven't heard around this part in quite some time. A lot of cold weather and ice everywhere. Utah Valley trying to warm things up, warm the crowd up, though, on the inside. Ten-point lead over the Lopes, 31-21. 3.40 left to play in the first half. So far, Utah Valley, again, at that full-balance breakfast, Holton. Everybody on the court scoring. Nobody really in double figures yet, but you've got uh, Brandon Avert with seven, Isaiah White with six, a handful, including T.J. Washington, Gaz and Jardine with four points, Woodbury and Overton with three. And then, like we mentioned before, on the other side for Grand Canyon, there's only three people that have scored. Carlos Johnson putting his team on his back and surprised he's still out there on the court. Has to go see a chiropractor from all that weight he's carrying out there. <laughs> 13 points, and with that scoring for the Wolverines, almost everybody that you mentioned or everybody has made a basket also has an assist, too. And so everybody's involved in this game, and they're moving the ball extremely well. And, again, they've only given up 21 points in this first half. They've just come out with a lot of energy on both sides of the basketball. And Grand Canyon is no slouch. Not at all. No, not at all. They have terrific athletes. They have, again, you see that shot there by Lever, and beautiful example of an athlete right there. Athlete and then just skill. Coach Marley always, again, what he brings is a lot of NBA background, connections, kids like playing for him. And so he gets skilled guys, and I was pretty skilled there by Trey Woodbury on his Kobe-esque I, I'm wearing my away. Kobe's, my lucky Kobe's <laughs> got the UV Wolverines to win on Thursday, and that was quintessential Kobe from Trey Dove right there. Nice move on the baseline, but again, closing defense by Utah Valley. Now at nine on the shot clock, now eight, seven. And Washington on the floor. They're gonna call a foul. I believe that was gonna go against Bryce Okpo. Actually, oh, I'm sorry, that, they're gonna call it on on Laver, and that's going to be his third foul, right? I got two here. Oh, that's fouls drawn. That one always gets me. So that's only his first foul, which, again, he's one of those three players for Grand Canyon that have scored, and so he brings a lot to their team. Outlet pass to Washington. Washington, stutter step, drives, great space, kiss off the glass too hard. Morley there to gobble it up for the rebound. Jardine on its way. No good. Overton skies up for the board, kicks it back out to the big fella. Big fella almost got it to fall, but he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. No, this is just a different Wolverines team that Absolutely. we're used to seeing on this court, chasing after rebounds, fighting for loose balls. And again, no one taking bad shots, looking for the extra pass. This is a fun basketball game to watch. If this is the if this is the type of basketball that the Mark Madsen future has in store, it's gonna be very fun. And, again, we mentioned that New Mexico State game. New Mexico State's supposed to be the, the juggernaut of the conference. This might be a fun march that we get to see, too. Morley missed the first. Trying to redeem himself here and makes a second. Morley now with three points on the evening. Grand Canyon, two of their last 10 offensively, trying to get something going here. Blackshear. 10 on the clock, makes his move, zigzags. Morley with the shot block from behind. Here comes Trey Woodbury for Utah Valley. 1.30 left to play, he'll pull it, pull it up. That one comes up short. Blackshear again, racing, gives way to Carlos Johnson. Another dump off to Laver, and Laver Tacking up some more points now. 
10 points for Labor. So the dynamic duo of Johnson and Labor, 23 of the 25 <laughs> points combined between the two. Jardine puts it on the floor, drives. Morley again with another re attempted rebound. That one, they're going to call a foul. And they're going to call a foul on Brandon Morley. I didn't quite see that one. I thought Brandon initially had the basketball there. As you can hear the protest from the fans. And you know, I've been encouraged by the way Brandon's been playing, the way he's came out. Again, we mentioned the tough step throughs early on. He's got his hands on a lot of rebounds early. And I didn't quite see the foul on that one. Coach Madsen showing off the inner mad dog ferocity. And he's pleading. He's pleading with Jimmy Cassis as to what that was. And as Coach Madsen was trying to talk with the official, Carlos Johnson moseyed his way on down, got in front of Coach Madsen and said, well, he was over my back. I just think Jimmy had a rough night last night. He, I mean, he, would, he didn't want to talk to Coach Madsen when he came over. A little aggressive and kind of upset himself today. As, as I don't know why, because I think it's been a pretty clean game so far. And, Refs haven't really played a huge factor. <laughs> and another foul is called against Utah Valley. This one will stay here. And this one's going to go against Katz and Jardine. And that'll be his first personal foul. Yeah. Another tough call against Wolverine. I always thought those were pretty tough as they call a foul on a great block out. I thought Trey was in wonderful position. He was doing everything he can. I mean, you're seeing the same thing we're seeing with CJ out there for Grand Canyon. He is a strong, impactful player, and that was just a good block out, and the refs should have played on. And these free throws have changed this game quickly. Again, Grand Canyon couldn't do anything offensively, and we're stuck at that 21 number. Now with these free throws, make this thing a seven point game. So a minute left exactly, full court press still activated for Grand Canyon. Trey Woodbury pull it from the free throw line. That's textbook. High percentage from Trey Woodbury. Quickly with seven points. So 36, 27, the lead back to nine for the Wolverines. Nice spin move from Johnson. Again, doing everything he can to keep this team in the game. 17 points from CJ in his first half. Already at his average of the season. A nice little shot off the glass there from him. And again, that was the two Wolverine defenders coming at him. Shot clock is off. TJ Washington with 10 on the clock will now make his move. Eight, seven. Kaz and Jardine on the floor with five. And they're going to call a foul against Louis Banagi. So Kaz and Jardine will shoot and try and close this first half out offensively on a high note. Which I think a big free throw for Kazan. Kazan passed up a couple of wide open threes that he usually takes just because he had missed a few early on. Hopefully these free throws get him feeling better as Coach Marley's going to draw something up with 5.2 seconds to go in this first half. And Coach Dan Marley is not too happy. He's uh, giving his team, trying to give him a Hoosiers type of pep talk. I don't know. Maybe that's coming in four seconds at like halftime. Exactly. But uh, nevertheless, Utah Valley on top, 38-29. And oh, we've talked about this already on the broadcast, and I'm getting texts from, from Kyle McDonald, who's part of the president and CEO of the Wack Hoops Digest, and other people watching this game saying, this is a completely different energetic Utah Valley team that we've seen, especially over the last couple of weeks here at home. I don't know if it's just the nor warmer weather. Guys are excited to the see green the snow go, I don't know. snow go away. They've just been playing, you know, at a different level of energy. And, and again, I go back to that New Mexico State game because 
kind of gives you the outlook and the hope that, hey, we could go out and win this thing. Dixon at the buzzer, and that's good. So Dixon splits the defense, goes right up and in, and gets Grand Canyon the quick two points as they sneak that one in before the clock buzzes. So 38-29, the referees are going to come to the scorer's table just to make sure it was officially official. Yeah, it looked pretty good to me. Yeah, it looked like he got it off. Tough to guard that going full speed. 2-2-1, two, 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 press the Wolverines that set up, try to slow him down, and first, once they break that first layer of the defense, they got downhill quickly. Utah Valley on top, 38-31 at the break. We'll step aside. Halftime in Orem, Utah. Wolverines on top. Jacobson with his wife Alice right by his side took us to the Great West Conference. They formed a conference of independent teams and we dominated that conference. We won all four Commissioner's Cups the years we were in the Great West Conference thanks to Mike's leadership. Thank you. 
Yeah, we've got a, a good crowd here today. And I wouldn't say a great crowd, but we have a good crowd here today. And the thing that you all know, and I know too, is that our teams very much represent our crowd. The way you cheer, the way you support them, the way that you're here for them. And I know that uh, when I started working here, we had none of this. school gyms, we played our game in high school gyms, we had none of our own facilities. And today I would match the facilities we have against anybody. And it continues to grow, it continues to mature, and it continues to get better. My thought was would be and my hope would be that you are proud to be a Wolverine. I would encourage you to come to your neighbors, your friends, and invite them to come, come and be a part of this environment to where we can fill the seats, where we can open up the other bleachers and really have something that will put the pressure on the visiting team. And you're doing a good job with them. You know, and from the very beginning, you know, my thought and my philosophy has always been is to surround yourself with greatness. Surround yourself with others that can do more, or at least as much, as what you're able to do. And as you do that, you're going to be happier, you're going to have more success, and that's really what athletics is all about. We're here to win. We're here to have a good time. We're here to play hard, but we're here to win. And you were a big part of us winning. And so let our athletes know that. It's a great day to be a Wolverine. Thanks for being here, and thanks for the honor that I've done for so long.
Welcome back to Orem, Utah, on the campus of Utah Valley University. Brandon Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker. Had a fantastic ceremony here at halftime honoring the former athletic director here in Utah Valley. Mike Jacobson was here for 29 years and uh, saw this Wolverines school, the squad, go from junior college straight to Division One. the only time in NCAA history that that has happened. When he started out here, there were four sports, and now there are 16. So it was a fantastic celebration to honor a great man for what he has done with this school. And his last day in office is the first day that Utah Valley became part of this Western Athletic Conference. Kazan Jardine starts off the second half with a fantastic shot there, his first three-pointer, and hopefully that gives him the confidence he needs to continue to go through here with the second half as the Wolverines are on top, 41-33, Holden. Yeah, I think both teams got the start they wanted. I mean, Carlos Johnson got going early off of that turnover by T.J. Washington, and then on the other end, we mentioned the Kasdan after he made those free throws that hopefully that would bleed over into the second half, and he comes right out of the gates and makes a three-point shot for him. So that's Isaiah White's third personal foul. And Holden, at halftime, you looked at me and you said, okay, second half predictions. If you're Utah Valley, honestly, what they did in the first half was fantastic with the energy, the pace. They weren't scared to shoot the basketball. They weren't taking poor shots. And they had 11 field goals made in that first half, and they had 11 assists to go ahead with it. So on the board here, if you're looking I mean, at it. It's the definition of balance, right? right. I mean, you didn't. It, we're not Grand Canyon right now where, you know, 98% of our points are coming out of two guys. They move the ball extremely well. They're unselfish. But losing Isaiah, and gratefully, J.J.'s a terrific athlete, does a good job concentrating defensively. But guarding Carlos Johnson is, you know, I mean, it's going to be the game. I won't be surprised if UVU goes into some type of box and one and just puts all of their attention on Carlos because all the offense goes through him as E-Man gets himself a trip to the foul line. So on the other side, if you're Coach Dan Marley, what did you say to your team at halftime? What is your correction? coming out here in the second half almost to the sense that you know everyone else got to join the team right I mean if two guys are all production and it's not like they're running offensive sets just for Carlos and uh, Alessandro there's opportunities for guys to get involved and they just need to be more aggressive and continue to you know not only look for each other and look for Carlos and labor but uh, look for themselves too to get a shot going well, most definitely Utah Valley cannot afford to get their foot off the gas pedal as Kazan Jardine is going to get called for a foul. That will be his second personal. And this is another trap that Utah Valley can't get their foot caught in is they can't, they can't uh, let all their all the fouls get in their way. You can see J.J. battling there on the block with Carlos already, and he will. He'll be willing to do that, and he'll be physical and – Right there, smart too, not just trying to muscle with him. And Carlos didn't even argue the foul. He just turned around and handed it to the <laughs> official and helped J.J. up and said, right, yeah, I was a little too much there. So Mike Jacobson, the former athletic director, will join us on headset in a few minutes. Brandon Avery goes hard to the floor. Gets helped up by T.J. Washington. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And already, Holton, in the first two minutes, we've seen the intensity turned up for both teams, a lot of more physicality as Carlos Johnson is getting a little talking to from the officials here. Well, this is where Grand Canyon against Seattle really turned it on, was in the second half. We mentioned before that they gave up 54 points in that first half against Seattle U. And, you know, They've won seven games in whack play for a reason. These guys aren't just going to go away in this second half. And so, you know, look for these guys to get going and to make some run at it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some type of 8 or 10-0 run out of Grand Canyon, and this will turn into a fight. Averitt misses off the back iron. That ball is deflected out, but he gets it back anyway. So a reset shot clock for the Wolverines. 43-34 lead. 
Washington. Now with seven on the clock, got to make a move. Six, five, four, three. Washington gives way. Last second shot. That's a splashdown from Tazzy Jardine. Great recognition there by TJ. As everybody in the building thought TJ was going to take that shot, even Kazan Jardine's defender who started cheating that direction, and TJ quickly got it over to him. Jardine quickly now with 12 points after back-to-back three-pointers to start the second half. We haven't even been three full minutes yet, and Wolverines have already got three team fouls. Yeah, the Revs are really cleaning this one up, and... Again, I didn't think they really played a big impact in that first half and called a clean game, and we'll see if we continue to get a happy whistle, so to speak, in the second half. And travel there is Labor trying to get away with that extra Euro step. Off of the step through for him on his spin move. Washington bringing it up the court with pace. 46-34, Wolverines on top. And the crowd more energized here knowing that they can't let the Wolverines slip away here. Averitt now with 10 on the clock, gets a screen from Jardine, loses his defender, drives, puts up a shot, count it! And the foul, Brandon Averitt. He'll go to the free throw line for a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play. Great body control by him. He kind of got, you know, distorted there as he went up for that shot and got hit at the same time and able to get the soft bounce off the rim to get the M1. And Avery completes the three-point play. Now with 11 points, six of seven at the free throw line. Johnson steps into a deep three. And that was on a target and went straight for the cup as soon as it left his hand. Beautiful jump shot. I mean, what can't he do offensively? We've seen him multiple times take guys down low into the post, and we saw his range and ability to rise up from the three-point line. Overton with the spin move, levitates and finishes. Blackshear, wide open jumper. That one misses. Jardine, after a lot of contact, gets the rebound out to Averitt. Averitt, ooh, that was a little dicey there. Washington somehow threw the ball up. They're going to call a, a tripping foul on Alessandro Lever. That's what these guards do. Between Brandon and TJ, they put so much pressure on these guys defensively, either in transition or we saw late shot clock situations. They do a great job of getting, again, the term downhill, getting to the rim and putting pressure on the officials to make a call. Fans wanting that last foul call to be in the act. T.J. Washington is pleading with the official. Mark Matz is pleading with the official here. Wolverine basketball, 51-37 lead. Washington. And a foul is called. This one's going to go against Javon Blackshear. That'll be his second personal foul. So 20-second shot clock for the Wolverines. T.J. Washington. Kaz and Jardine thought about it. Washington again. J.J. Overton drives. Trying to show off the muscles. No whistle is called. And here come the Grand Canyon Lopes on the other side. And that foul is going to go offensively against Grand Canyon. That foul is going to go against Lorenzo Jenkins. And that'll take us to our under 16 media timeout. 51 37. Wolverines on top. We'll be right back with Jacobson after this here on UDU TV, Wack Digital Network. Let me 
tell you something, Mean Gene. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to leave it all on the mat. Because that's what I do when I get it done so I can do it. Yeah! I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. Give your head a Mountain Dew Kickstart. The latest from KSL 5 News, including breaking news as it happens, and all your favorite KSL shows, ready to watch anytime. Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. Hello, everybody. Thank you again for joining us here on the Wax Israel Network. We are pleased to be joined courtside now by former athletic director for Utah Valley, Mike Jacobson. Mike Jacobson was the athletic director for Utah Valley for the last <laughs> for 29 years. Mike, how good does it feel to be back here at the UCC Center in a basketball game? Uh, it feels like home. You know, I spent a lot of time in this gym, and uh, it's just great to be here. Uh, great to see us starting to win a little bit now. That'll be great. And uh, I'm kind of pleased with the fan support. We could be a little better than what we are right now, but that's something we've got to build on, and, and it'll come. But uh, it's a great day to be a Wolverine, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, when you took over and when you were athletic director during those years, when did you really feel or have this vision where you knew that Utah Valley could be Division I? You know, uh, we just got to a point that we need to, to make a move. Uh, you know, we had done really well on the junior college level. We were recruiting good athletes. Uh, we had really good community support. And um, we started looking at, you know, going to Division Two, which a lot of our schools in the state were Division Two, and going to their games and watching them. And uh, that just didn't seem like the right thing to do. So uh, I, uh, I thought we're going to go Division One, And I told a few people about it. Of course, they laughed at me and said that won't happen. And it, uh, you don't want to challenge me on anything, <laughs> you know, because that's when I uh, you know, really, but, and I, I knew we could do it. I thought I, we had the facilities, we had the, the support of the community, and we were recruiting really well, and we thought we could compete. And uh, so um, went to the, uh, the people in charge and told them what we wanted to do, and they said, well, that's not possible. You can't do that. And I invited them to come and visit us, and we got them on campus. They saw our facilities. They saw our staff. Uh, they saw everything, and uh, they said okay and they put us on a provisional and uh first time it ever happened it'll never happen again because they won't allow it you've got to go to division two for at least seven years so uh anyway we're just happy we're able to do it i think that puts us in a great place right now and uh, we've got to get our community behind us we've got forty thousand students here and you know we've got maybe 200 sitting over there so we need to do better with that but as we win as we get better as things go forward i, I think that'll happen now, you, you were out of the state of Utah for a, for a few years. You served as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as, as a missionary. Uh, now that you're back here, do you have any further plans to continue your engagement here at Utah Valley? Well, uh, no, n nothing really direct on that. I'm going to attend as many games as I can. We actually uh, have moved to Idaho. We live in Eagle, Idaho now. And so uh, we moved out of the Hobble Creek Canyon where we had been for, you know, 50 years. And uh, but we get back every six weeks. We're back in back here with with family and friends. And I got six kids playing basketball right now down here. So we come down to watch them play. And uh, so I'm going to get to every game I can. I'm not going to be here every week, but I'm going to get to here as often as I can. Well, your your influence extends beyond, of course, your 29 year tenure here. Uh, my, my color commentary partner, Holton Hunsaker, you had a great relationship with his father. We'll let you go with, with this last question here. What's one of your fondest memories about uh, Holton and his father? Well, he, he's, he was a winner. You know, he knew how to win. We had great years when, when he was here. And we've had a lot of good years, too. But he had the experience. Other coaches we had hired, this was, you know, their first major college coaching job. And he had had others. And uh, he set a standard for us that, set a, a message to our community and then set a message nationally too that that we are competitive that we can win and so uh he's a great man he's a great coach uh and he did wonders for us and so uh we're, we're really fortunate to have him for the uh 11 years that we did 
Well, Mike, it's, uh, it's been an honor for me to be a part of this Utah Valley Athletic community over the last four years, and, and uh, we'll see what the future holds with me here. But, uh, you're, you're, again, your influence just has, has no bounds, and everything that you've done, it's, it's been fantastic. So congratulations on your induction to the Sports Hall of Fame here at the University. Well, I appreciate that very much, and honestly, I think it was way out of, <laughs> out of the world as far as what everybody did today. Honestly, it's amazing, and I'm so honored and, and, and pleased and embarrassed about it all. But uh, at the same time, I have a passion for this university. You know, I spent a lot of hours here, a lot of time, and uh, it's great to see where we're at today, and it's great to see what the future will bring. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Utah Valley on top, 53-41. Again, that was Mike Jacobson, the former athletic director for the Wolverines over the last, he served for 29 years here. Took Utah Valley from a junior college straight to Division I, something that has never been done before, won't be done again. And uh, can't say enough how, uh, how crazy really that is. It's, it's hard for people to comprehend that now that we are in 2020. But uh, for a school like this, the biggest school in the state, as far as population goes, to be where they are competing and continuing to increase in all sports, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to see. Wolverines again on top, 53-42. About 13.50 left to play here in the second half. T.J. Washington out to J.J. Overton. Overton through his legs. Drives, gets the contact. No shot. Foul on the floor. And they're going to call that one on Isaiah Brown. And that'll be Isaiah Brown's fourth personal foul. So he joins Jenkins and Laver with four fouls as well. So J.J. Overton at the free throw line. A knuckleball shot, but it finds the bottom of the net. Mike, had some very nice things to say about you there, Holton, and your dad. <laughs> That was just because I was sitting next to him. <laughs> of course, no. Mike, again, Mike, such an impact on our family and still does. So I, I work out with or, you know, help train two of his grandsons. So I've got really close with them and also his two sons that are the fathers of those grandsons. And so we still have a deep connection and obviously how much opportunity and, you know, not only for me personally to even allow – a player-son relationship to even happen at his program, but obviously everything he did for my dad and the success that they had together. Overton drives, acrobatic reverse layup. J.J. Overton showing everybody he can do it all. C.J. steps into a three-pointer. That comes up short. 13 minutes left exactly in regulation. Wolverines on top by 12. Could be more here. Woodbury on its way. Down it goes, Trey Woodbury. Puts the Wolverines on top, 59-44. Hey, and these road trips, they get long, right? Playing in Seattle Thursday night. I don't know if they came that night over or slept the night and stayed, you know, Friday came. But you can tell this Grand Canyon team just does not have the juice they Woo. need as they get an and one here. The juice right now to pull this off. Speaking of juice, Javon Blackshear getting the juice going up against a, an oak tree there and Brandon Morley. And Coach Dan Marley right now not looking very happy. Looks a little he, like, he's, like he's an intense guy. I mean, that's how he was as a player, right? So everybody loves him. He's extremely intense, tough. And every time I see him, he looks like he just got out of the tanning bed. I've heard the term being thrown around uh, that he looks like Thanos from Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon Morley avenging a little demons in the past with the alley-oop there. He's definitely, I mean, he's about he's to rip. Oh, my goodness. And for, you know, his age and to stay in shape like that and everything, he's, I don't know where the travel is on that one, the step back, but... Outside that last and one, everything just going against Grand Canyon right now. 
61-47, 12 minutes left to play. And uh, talk about a huge momentum swing this could be for Utah Valley. Back-to-back -back wins at home after the heartbreaking loss on the road in Las Cruces a week ago. Isaiah wide drive, soars, gets fouled and scores. Count it. Isaiah White drives, gets the bump, finishes in the air. Under 12, media timeout. And additionally, it's the fifth foul there, so I believe that's Bryce, right? The foul. Who did they give that last Jenkins. foul to? Yep. The foul, so Jenkins, that'll be his fifth personal. We'll take a quick break. More basketball after this in Orm, Utah. shopping experience at Murdoch Hyundai that has everyone talking. Maybe it's the safety inspections or the car washes for life. It could be the price match guarantee or maybe it's just the way you're treated. Come fall in love in Linden, Logan, and Murray at Murdoch Hyundai. Your no regrets dealer. Sixty-three forty-seven, Utah Valley now with their largest lead of the ball game. Look at back over the last ten times these team these teams have played each other, the largest victory by either team came January third in two thousand and nineteen. And Grand Canyon was victorious over Utah Valley seventy-one to sixty. But other than that, all the other games were decided by either one point, two point, five points. So this is. Yeah, both these teams, when they came into the WAC, again, Grand Canyon had that kind of the same thing Cal Baptist is going through. They're not going to be able to participate in the tournament for some time, but they're extremely impactful programs. Again, Grand Canyon with you know terrific facilities and what their online program brings, you know, revenue-wise. They have you know, all the support around their athletic programs, and then UVU just continues to produce great teams as we've seen again we've got 17 assists on 19 made baskets and these guys play so well together tonight and it's been or this afternoon it's been really fun to watch a backcourt violation here that's something that you hardly ever see not even in like rec league at the YMCA <laughs> ball they call that and, and that one they just they're getting after him right now just defensively. And we mentioned long road trips is late in the season. It just wears on you mentally. And that one was just a mental mistake there as he didn't wait for his teammate to get across that half court line. Give and go. Brandon Morley in the air. Gets the contact and the layup. Brandon Morley now with seven points. And they're going to get a foul call, most likely against Morley. So that'll be his third personal foul. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Holton, but I think that every eligible player for Utah Valley has been on the court so far. And the only person not to score is Brad Kitchen. As Laver makes a free throw on the other side for Grand Canyon. And we talked about the, the dynamic one-two punch of Johnson with 23 points and Labor now after that free throw with 11. Make that 12. As we've talked about the balance on the Wolverine side, again, I think Brandon Morley has had one of his best games this yep. season. He, Absolutely. And again, it's not just 
You mentioned what E-Man does and his impact on the game without hitting something on the um, on the stat sheet. But what Brandon's done against Laver and just defensively to make himself big and take up room in that lane, he's played himself a wonderful ball game this afternoon. Johnson with the ball trailing 68 to 49. Gives way to Blackshear and an offensive foul called on Carlos Johnson. This deficit continues to spread right here. This thing could push it over the 20 point golf ball game with just 10 minutes to play. And we're not seeing Coach Marley up and down that sideline like he was before. It almost seems like these guys have thrown in the towel. Brandon Morley trying to get the reverse, not enough with it. 68-49. Blackshear guarded by Overton. And a foul called against Trey Woodbury. Bryce Okpo going up for the layup. And that'll be Trey Woodbury's third personal. That'll bring Eman Alojapoki back into the mix. Okpo makes his free throw. The pride of the colony. In Texas, as Brandon Morley steps off to standing ovation from his teammates and claps. Opa makes both free throws, and Brandon Avert checks back in for TJ Washington. Washington, four points, nine assists tonight. Again, those guards set the tone for this entire team. And as they're sharing the basketball, they make extra passes. They take the right shots. And it just lifts everybody else. And they want to follow suit. And they want to be a part of it. So I'm not surprised. He, he is a you know prolific passer and has been again since he started here the program. Averitt with five on the floor. Drives. Kissed off the glass and in. 70 to 51. Nice pass with the finish. Okpo. 70 53. Wolverines on top. You can hear Coach Madsen yelling for movement, continued movement on the offensive series here for the Wolverines. Woodbury calling for it, gives way. Now to Overton. Overton drives, spins at the elbow. That one rattles out. Brown now penetrates in the key, gets the contact, and one. And if that goes against Isaiah White, that'll be his fourth. Uh, instead, of that's going to go against Trey Woodbury, and that'll be his fourth. Yeah, unfortunate foul call there. I didn't see a whole lot of contact, and as you just mentioned, kind of pick your poison there as either player picked up four fouls and both so important for these Wolverines with nine minutes left. Lopes not going anywhere. Trailing 70 to 55. We'll be back in Orm after this. I came to college to play my sport, but more importantly, to earn a degree. I'm constantly learning from those around me, my professors and peers, my coaches and teammates, and even my opponents. There's nothing better than game day, battling side by side with my teammates. The competition is what pushes me to be the best that I can be. I take pride in my community and want to ensure that I am giving back and inspiring the next generation to do the same. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. Hey. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. Just about nine minutes left here in regulation. 
Utah Valley on top, 70 to 55 over Grand Canyon. Brandon Crow alongside Holden Hunsaker, thank you for letting us be a part of your Saturday afternoon on the WAC Digital Network, as well as KSL streaming apps, other platforms. You know there are a lot of tantalizing options out there. We're glad that you chose to be with us today. It's not going to lie, Holden. I knew. I mean, I knew I was going to be excited for this game, but I, I had no idea that the Wolverines were going to come out play like this today. Again, it's the energy going into this WAC tournament that's going to be so fun to see, and for them to gel and to click like this late in this. Again, Mexico State's 12 and 0. Everyone's playing for second place right now in the you know regular season conference standings. But once we get into the tournament play, everyone's 0 and 0 again, and anybody has a chance, especially these Wolverines, as they showed against New Mexico State last Saturday that they've got the pieces to compete with them. Wolverines now trying to use some clock here. Overton penetrates with 8-7. Bounce pass, Isaiah White. Count it! Isaiah White flexing his muscles as he goes to the free throw line to try and complete the three-point play. And that foul was going to go against Bryce Okba. That'll be his second personal. Isaiah White misses off the back iron. I think that was the quietest that we've heard this <laughs> UCCU center all day. And now you see the Wolverines drop back in that 2-3 zone, and Grand Canyon just stands around. They don't know what to do. If it's not Laver, if it's not CJ going off one-on-one, -on -one as Laver gets a catch in the high post and able to knock it down. But this change and mix-up of defenses, Grand Canyon just hasn't had an, uh, an answer to it this entire afternoon. Alessandro Labor is a junior, and so he's only going to get better. And I know the folks already in Phoenix love the way that this guy plays, but we mentioned it earlier with that first layup he had earlier on in the ball game. He's already cemented himself at least it tied for second all time in Grand Canyon's Division I scoring list. I'm a fan. Count me as a fan of Alessandro Labor. 72-58, we'll take a break. Under 8 media timeout in Orem, Utah. We'll be back right after this on the WAC Digital. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from award-winning accounting to marketing and entrepreneurship programs, there's a place for you at Utah Valley University. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. How does Costa Vida create the ultimate sweet pork burrito? We start by following our award-winning recipe, one that calls for everything to be made fresh, from scratch, every day. Like our beautifully braised pork, seasoned beans, savory sauces, and delicious cilantro lime rice. Even our tortillas are cooked to order. It's a difference you can taste. Treat yourself to the ultimate sweet pork burrito, only at Costa Vida. That lucky fan right there walking away with a brand new HD TV for free. Doesn't even have to pay taxes on it. It's better than the price is right. You got to pay taxes on those prices. <laughs> Fans enjoying themselves Saturday afternoon basketball in Orem, Utah. So are we. Hopefully you are as well, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us here. 72-58, Utah Valley on top. And really the story continues from Thursday night where Utah Valley top to bottom, consistent scoring, solid defense. And we've, we've mentioned this before, but Holton, Utah Valley's made 23 field goals and they have 21 assists. And that, that to me speaks more than anything. And I know they keep track of a lot of stats, but that would be one I, I man, got up quickly on that one. And 
you, you can't shoot a flat shot against him around the rim. Labor thought he got that jump hook elevated enough, and he was able to get his hand on it. But I wonder in the record books if there has been a game where only two shots did not come off of an assist. We'll have to get our statistician to take a look on that. Careless turnover by the Wolverines gives way to the Lopes in transition. Wide open, Carlos Johnson. Step back, three-pointer. Comes up short. Isaiah White got a hand on it. Isaiah White still saves it. And Mark Madsen emphatically tells his team to just hold on. Settle down here. We got seven minutes left of this. Overton back out to Jardine. E-man Elodjapoki calling for it. Bounce pass out to Overton. Overton sees a crease, draws baseline. Oh, gets the reverse. JJ going old school. That was nice. He even got his hand on the rim on that one. I mean, he lost it a little bit coming up, but JJ showing his athleticism and, and answer. That seems maybe a little too late, but now he's cutting the lead just to 13. Dixon's three-pointer brings the Lopes now to 61 points. TJ Washington going to come back to the scores table for the Wolverines. 74-61. Overton goes baseline again and loses it. Coach Madsen saying that uh, he believes that was a foul. Referees are going to try and discuss the appropriate action here. Washington checks in for Overton. No foul call. Ball awarded to the Wolverines. Utah Valley's made nine of their last 11 field goals. They get the inbound into Isaiah White. Hands off to Washington. Washington now with nine on the shot clock. Eight. Cross court pass. Isaiah White in the corner. Too strong. And they're going to call an offensive foul on the Wolverines. I think it'll go against Brandon Averett. And that'll be his fourth personal foul. So it could get sloppy here over the next five minutes with a lot of people in foul situations. Woodbury and Averitt both with four for Utah Valley. Alojapoki and White, as well as Morley, all have three for Utah Valley. Brent, it almost becomes a chess match for the coaches, right? Who do you put in? What situations? We just want one guy in for offense and sub him out so he doesn't get a foul on defense. And it gets hard, again, to build any consistency, which Grand Canyon hasn't done offensively. But they keep chipping away at this lead. And we mentioned before that these guys are second in the whack right now. And they've won a lot of games. And so they have a winning mentality, a winning nature about them, and they're not going to go away. 74-63. This lead was at 20 points just a few minutes ago. And now after that jump shot, 74-65, we're back in single digits here, Holden. This is exactly what the Wolverines did not want to happen. They didn't want to give up any sort of lax mentality. Yep. And it looks like that's what's kind of taken place defensively over the last. Yeah, it's tough. It's easy to get comfortable when you see yourself up 20 points in the second half of a ball game as Brandon Averitt. Brandon Averitt again, who's been hot from that three-point line. That broke a 7-0 run for Grand Candy. Naver, it's three-pointer. Now brings him at 16 points for the Wolverines. Laver trying to do work on the other end. Five minutes left to play. Turn around. Quick jump shot over Alojapoki. He learned from his previous mistake. He's like, okay, he got me on the last time. This time he get him a little quicker. <laughs> Forgot how long those arms are. Laver now with 16 as well. Alojapoki trying to back down. Alojapoki gets the ball right back. Averitt thought about it. Now he's going to try and use some clock here. Isaiah White drives. A lot of contact. And the foul is going to go against Carlos Johnson. And that will be his fourth personal. And it's tough when you have a 20-point lead as well because now you just want to try to suck up the clock and, and – play patient or, you know, again, just time management basketball. And, and sometimes that can be hard because you don't know when to attack the rim. You don't know if coach is going to yank me out because it took a, a shot too early in the shot clock. And that kind of translated over defensively is, you know, kind of that 
not relaxed basketball, but kind of a less aggressive mindset and translated over defensively. And you know, hopefully after that last drive there by Isaiah and you know, kind of chipping back into his lead wakes these guys up. 79-67, 430 left in regulation. Nice drive. Cut and connect for the Lopes there. Dixon comes up short, but the Wolverines get the rebound. Washington. Averitt, now to Alo Japoki. Washington. Bounce pass. E man, throw it down. Slam dunk. Beautiful dime right there from TJ. 81 67. And a whistle stalls momentum on the other side. He managed to be picked up for one, trying to fight over top of that after having himself almost a Shaq logo moment on the other end. Under four, media timeout. We'll be back after this. UCCU is both a credit union and a full-service mortgage company. Which means that UCCU always provides the lowest rates and lower insurance premiums than other lenders. When your mortgage rate and insurance premium are lower, your monthly payment is also lower. It's just science. That's more money you can put into your home. Or back into your pocket. So if you're thinking about buying or refinancing a home, talk to us. The credit union that's been putting people over profits for over 60 years. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Chevrolet. I promise you'll love it. Another look at that dunk from Iman Alojapoki. He's putting an exclamation point on things here in the second half. The fans, even us, for a quick second, thought the Wolverines might have opened the door a little bit too much for Grand Canyon, but I think that dunk from Iman Alojapoki might have been that gust of wind to put that door a little bit closed here. The Laver continues to tack on some points for his night. 7 of 11 from the field. Perfect. 4 of 4 from the charity strike. 17 total points. Make that 18. See how much time on the shot clock Utah Valley will work before they make their move. Overton trying to go. He wants that dunk back. I, yes, I, he does. I have a feeling he wants that reverse dunk back. He keeps going baseline. And I think sometimes maybe he just surprised himself. He's like, oh, I can do that. And, you know, he starts attacking that rim a little bit more aggressively. And we've seen that's probably the third time he's driven baseline since that dunk. And it's been effective. He's getting to himself to the foul line. Again, those are late shot clock situations which coach Mark Batson is ha hammering his team to do use this clock we don't need to win by 35 we just need to win and that's what they're trying to do to manage this game Overton connects on the free throw Carlos Johnson his night is done fouling out with 25 points excuse me 23 points is Carlos Johnson his final stat line 8 of 11 from the field 
two of four from three, five of eight from the free throw line with four rebounds and three assists. Laver watching all the Wolverines go up into the popcorn machine. Waits for his time, strikes, gets the layup, and will go to the free throw line for the three-point play. Now it's going to be interesting to see who outside of Labor steps up on their team. And I think we just got the fifth foul call here on E-Man, and that will be the end of E-Man's night with three minutes and 30 seconds left to go. So Lojapoki checks out. Seven points. Two of three from the floor, three of four from the free throw line. Five rebounds, two assists, and a handful of blocks as well. Laver, now 21 points. Five of five at the free throw line, Alessandro. So 83-72, Wolverines on top by 11 with 3.15 left to play in regulation. Bounce pass down low to Jardine. Jardine turns, and that is the shot that you want. Kaz and Jardine, very patient, waited for it, and finished. And that's a part of his game that keeps developing, is his ability to score in the low post. We know he's a terrific shooter. But adding a little variety to his game and you know, finding some shots, opportunities for shots, on that low block. 85-72, 2.30 left to play. Washington drives, cross-court pass, Averitt on the way, too strong. Morley with the rebound. And Mark Madsen says, take some time. Now you got an opportunity here to take this possession down near that two minute mark with a 13 point lead. Nice pass to Averitt with three on the clock. He got it. Sometimes I think TJ, you know, he throws those passes and he's got the look right. Sometimes he thinks he's a little Patrick Mahomes out there. <laughs> There's a big three-pointer that gets the shooter's touch from Brown straight up and down. 88-75. And hey, if you have 13 assists in a ball game that TJ Washington does tonight, you, know, you can be related to a lot of people. Ninety-three seconds left, 88-75. Wolverines on top here of the Los. Averett drives, Averett gets contact, puts it up, and counts it. 21 points now for Brandon Averett. Back-to-back 20-plus games for Brandon Averett. This is the brand neighbor we've been expecting. Morley getting his paw in there defensively. Brown wants another, and he gets another. Back-to-back -back trays from Isaiah Brown. 90 to 78. Averitt finally gets it past the timeline. And Averitt's going to milk this clock. Fans start to come Ten. up on their feet as they sense this one is all but over. Is looks like Brandon got hit in the face there a little bit as he's grabbing his nose. That foul is on Mikey Dixon. That'll be his fourth. And Brad Kitchen about to check into the ball game here. Averitt. Looks like he's okay. It'll go to the free throw line. Averitt makes the first free throw. And Brad Kitchen checks in for TJ Washington. Washington, four points, 13 assists, and three rebounds, only two turnovers. We were That's quite the stat line. Yeah, before we were hitting we, him like a pinata early on the season without we me. We were. It was. It was a part of his game that he just couldn't break away from for three or four of those games, you know, mid-season, and he's obviously cleaned that up. And to have 13 assists is an amazing game. Labor doing work in the post, trying to get a couple more points here. 
all hard there from the Italiano. And that foul is going to go against Brandon Morley. That'll be his fourth. So Louis Benaghi will come in for the Lopes at the next buzzer. And Labor, who's already sitting at 21, can tie Carlos Johnson for the team high if he makes both. And makes the first. Grand Canyon after this one, Holton, going to go back, regather themselves, and finish off the season with three games at home. New Mexico State this next week on Thursday and UTRGV and before finishing things out against uh, Bakersfield on March 7th. Just can't believe it's already tournament time. These seasons, every time we start, it's like a blink and it ends. And, you know, for a lot of us in this building, we're approaching the best time of the year, right? And the March Madness hits. It's a lot of energy and excitement. Everybody gets ready to prepare their brackets and it's a fun time of year. And Utah Valley, crowds and teams, fans, players included, knock on their feet. 92 to 80 final score. First time since 2014 where the Wolverines have swept the lopes of Grand Canyon. Big time victory, back to back victories at home for the Wolverines of Utah Valley. Still got work to do, right? These are great building blocks. Past few games that they've done. And again, I don't know what the final assist to field goal stat was to end this thing, but if they continue to work as a team and move the ball like they did tonight, it, it, no matter how the season ends, these guys are going to have fun enjoying the end of this. And the final stat of uh, 29 field goals with 26 assists is pretty amazing. Fantastic performances from all over the place. Top to bottom for Utah Valley. T.J. Washington taking over that role as the point guard position, leading the way. The piggy bank dropping 13 dimes tonight. T.J. Washington back-to-back 20-plus -back game, 20-plus point performance from Brandon Averett as he finishes off with a team-high 23 points. For all of our hardworking staff and crew behind the scenes, for Ben Schroeder, for Mike Jacobson, for... Holden Hunsaker, I'm Brandon Crow saying so long and good night from Orem, Utah.